Tonight's Pedagogy Premiere on the Window of Tolerance. In this short video, we will explore what the Window of Tolerance means and how this can impact on the way children and young people view the world. We'll also consider practical ways to support children and young people to maintain an unhealthy window of tolerance. Everyone is different. We all have a window of tolerance, a space where we can have ups and downs in response to various situations, but generally we can cope with our emotions and behavioural response. This is shown by the blue zone. However, depending on our early experiences, this window can affect how we cope. Let's look at two different situations. Firstly, hyperarousal. When children are exposed to chronic traumatic stress, their brains sensitise the pathways for the fear response and create memories that automatically trigger that response without conscious thought. This is called hyperarousal. These children have an altered baseline for arousal and they tend to react to triggers that other children find non-threatening, sometimes in extreme ways. These children may be highly sensitive to non-verbal cues, such as eye contact or a touch on the arm, and they may read these actions as threats. Consumed with the need to monitor non-verbal cues for threats, their brains are less able to interpret and respond to verbal cues, even when they are in supposedly non-threatening environments like the classroom. Their brains have developed so that they are constantly alert and are unable to achieve the relative calm necessary for learning. When in this state, the key parts of the cortex are not receptive to cognitive information that's not relevant to survival. The child's brain is essentially unavailable to process efficiently the complex cognitive information being conveyed. Let's now look at hypoarousal. Hypoarousal occurs when the demands of a situation override the capacity for the child to have a coping mechanism, and this can result in a freeze, collapse or withdrawal response. Dr Chris Moore from epinsight.com posted a helpful blog to explain the concept of the window of tolerance further, with additional information around approaches we can use to support a child experiencing strong emotions. Dan Siegel refers to the window of tolerance as a span of harmonious functioning. He likens it to a middle ground between chaos and rigidity. Our level of emotional arousal within the window enables us to experience a, state, a sense of stability and coherence. We are reflective and flexible, able to think abstractly and adapt our responses to the challenges we face. There are lots of potential factors which can impact on the size of our window of tolerance for both adults and children. As adults, when we feel safe, calm and in control, the window will be much wider. Protective factors such as the support of a loved one or proactively planning to manage a difficult day can help us to maintain good enough functioning. The window will be narrower if we are coping with multiple sources of stress, feeling exhausted or having to deal with unfamiliar and unpredictable contexts, which can evoke strong thoughts and feelings. We move up and down the window continually, straying close to the boundaries. Sitting in a long traffic jam, being let down by a friend or receiving a tense email from a line manager may not tip us out of the window on their own, but one could be the straw that breaks a camel's back if they were all experienced on the same day. It's that feeling when you have a minor event, which normally wouldn't make you think twice, is something you fixate on and fume about for the rest of the day. Children's window of tolerance are naturally widened when they experience sensitive and responsive co-regulation with their emotions. But it's much less likely for those who have lived in chronic fear and feel a lack of safety and security because of past trauma or loss. Similarly, school staff and parents who continually feel burnt out by various demands will find it harder to think rationally, manage impulses and self-soothe when they slip out of their windows. Let's look at the optimal zone, the clear ocean. I'm going to think of the window of tolerance as rhythmic waves of an ocean. 
In this space, we are calm, collected and grounded. Our arousal state is one which is open, alert, curious, flexible and balanced. The waters might get choppy from time to time, but we can ride them out and resume smoother sailing. Let's think again about hyperarousal, the clouds of chaos. Pookie Knightsmith has talked about how we don't want to shoot through the top or fall through the bottom of our window of tolerance. I'm going to liken this to a thunderstorm above the clear ocean. It's when we move into fight or flight mode. The following words apply to the cloud of chaos. Angry, anxious, tense, panicked, hypervigilant, unfocused, overactive, impulsive, overwhelmed. Our hyperaroused state can be most easily noticed in our body as our heartbeat fastens, our breathing becomes shorter and we experience shakiness and aches and pains. So what can we do to turn away from the storm and move to more tranquil waters? Paying close attention to your breathing can make a big difference. A long exhale is calming, as is breathing through the left nostril while you hold your right nostril closed. Following a workout or a yoga routine might help make your breathing more coherent and help you to notice what it feels like in your body. When you're feeling all over the place, it can help to ground yourself. This can be as simple as going for a walk and actively noticing the sights and sounds around you. Getting out in nature can be really beneficial for wellbeing. Some find the 54321 technique helpful as it taps into different senses for a really immersive and active experience. Directing your energy to certain parts of your body can alleviate tension. Colouring, making a puzzle or squeezing a stress ball can occupy your hands. Considering adding a mindful element to everyday routines. If you've gotten into the habit of quickly shoveling food into your mouth before going back to a stressful task, take time to tidy up and set a place for dinner. Put some slow, gentle music on in the background and really savour the taste and texture of each bite. Drinking through a straw, eating chewy food and humming are other examples of comforting sensory feedback. We'll come on to some approaches later on which you can adapt for learners in your class. You might want to dim the lights or get cosy and warm in a soft blanket. Some people find it helpful to recite a short script or mantra. Others like to zero the positives of their day or three things that we can be grateful for despite facing difficult moments. Let's look at hyperarousal or the shore of rigidity. When we fall through the bottom of our window of tolerance, it can be as if our ship has run aground. This is freeze or a shutdown response. There can be an over rigid feeling of being stuck. Here are some words that apply to the shore of rigidity. Tired, numb, flat, lethargic, passive, foggy, depressed, disconnected or hopeless. The hyper aroused state is when we notice a real downturn in our mood. Our instinct can be to withdraw and avoid. We lack the motivation to complete tasks or even engage in things which we typically enjoy. This state is associated with a feeling of emptiness and even despair. So what can we do to push off from the shore and get back out into the ocean? We need to do the opposite with our breathing in this case. A longer exhale, inhale and a shorter exhale. And breathing in through the right nostril are more effective when we're lacking energy and need to wake our bodies up. Activation is a key response to a hypoarousal. This doesn't mean signing up for park runs or competitive sports, but those are great options if possible. The Active 10 app is a nice way of developing a routine of daily brisk walks. We can also schedule movement and stretch breaks during long periods of sitting so that we're more active when going from place to place. 
Tasks that we normally take for granted can seem impossible when we're feeling detached or depressed. Try to keep to consistent routines and break down mundane activity into smaller time limited steps. Gather evidence that you can set a goal and achieve it so that you can be, feel more confident when tackling bigger goals in the future. Fast paced and energetic music is the order of the day here. Adjust your sensory profile of the environment can also help us back into our optimal zone. Try replacing a warm shower with a colder one. Eat crunchier food or have some stronger aromas in your environment and add more lighting to your surroundings. Finally, navigating the calm waters. We can now see more of the clear ocean and pay attention to the land on the horizon and storm clouds overhead. Elizabeth Stanley has written about how we're able to function more effectively during stress and recover from stress when we have a wider window of tolerance. Here are some ideas for staying within and expanding our windows. Knowing your triggers is perhaps the most important starting point. What times of the day are you noticing the biggest change in your well-being? Are there certain activities that you dread? Are people that bring you down or stress you out some people that you're aware of? Stay aware of these triggers and help make good decisions before you face the clouds or the shore. Planning ahead can help reduce a lot of unnecessary stress. Ever notice how much more relaxed you feel when you're organised? If you find yourself constantly rushing around, try to give yourself a bit more time and space things out. Focus on doing the most important things first. Keeping to healthy habits is easier said than done, but start slow and small. This might be rescheduling one or two week walks a week, at times when you're most likely to follow through. Similarly, try heading to bed a little earlier and finding a new book or music to dissuade you from reading the news or checking your emails. Connecting with others is part of the five ways to well-being, given how important relationships are for our physical and mental health. Make some time to talk to your family and friends, check in with someone you haven't spoken to in a while, or let someone know that you're thinking about them and spread some kindness around your social network. Prioritising yourself can be one of the last things you do when you have a demanding job or lots of commitments from home or elsewhere. But there comes a point when it's healthier and more authentic to say no or not right now to something you would normally do regardless of how you feel. We also need to build in time for what Me High Cheek Sent Me High referred to as flow activities, things which allow us to feel completely absorbed and fulfilled. Lastly, taking a break should be proactively planned so that we can relax and recharge often enough to prevent us from reaching burnout. With learners in mind, Beacon House suggests some further approaches which can be used to help a child regulate back to within their window of tolerance. The key is that they're repeated regularly and repetitively. Here are some suggestions for children who exhibit a fight or flight response. Wearing a weighted vest. Use of firm, predictable adult touch. Soothing classical music or nature sounds. Steady tapping or drumming. The use of dim lights. Lava lamps or fibre optic lighting. And chewing on dried fruit or sweets. Here are some suggestions for children who exhibit a freeze or collapse response. Running fast or skipping, dancing, fidget toys, bright colours or lighting, crunchy foods, for example, crackers, pretzels or strong flavours, and cool temperatures. If your approach to supporting a child has been successful in making them feel calm, Make a note of what has worked. Remember that you might need to be ready to use an alternative tool, 
the same tool might not work every time. So if the approach wasn't successful, remember that relationships are the key to regulation. What is the quality of the adult-child relationship? Does it need developing before regulation can occur? Does the adult need regulating too? If the adult is outside of their window of tolerance, it might be much harder to help the child regulate. And if the child can't regulate easily despite your strategies, it's okay. Staying with them, being there for them and letting them know you care is the most important strategy of all. The resources on screen provide further opportunities to learn about the window of tolerance, how we can stay within our own window and effectively support children and young people to regulate within more manageable parameters. Thank you for engaging with this pedagogy premiere.